Rust is the bane of your truck's existence, and it will come back and haunt you here and there. Somebody already painted this truck, but you can see the bubbling rust coming up underneath. So we're going to be cutting off the rocker panel and our cab corner today. My name is David Welch. I'm here at Brothers Tech Center every single week to help you get your truck back on the road. You make sure you subscribe. I'm going to strip this down some, and I'll be back in just a minute to show you just how easy this is to do. So my bed's off, just about ready to pull off my door and fender, but what I want to do first is I want to make sure how my lines look. Now from the factory, they might have gotten this too high up, too far down, in or out. So I want to notice all those things before I take it off. If it is in or out, I'll be able to correct it when I put the new one on. If it is perfect, I can put the new one exactly in the same spot and I'll be okay. But the point is, I'm going to correct any mistakes that might be in there when I install my new one. All right, so you're probably going to need a little bit of help getting off the uh, hood and the doors and the fenders. Only took us about 45 minutes or so to get this all off. Now, sometimes people will do a rocker panel without taking off the door, but there's no way to get any welding or anything going on right here if you do that. So I always like to pull this off so I can get this done solid like. Next thing I'm going to do is I want to make sure that this is going to be in the same place. So I'll just get a ruler. I'll put it right on here. I'll go up, say, 12 inches, then I'll mark it right here and put 12 inches. I'll do the same thing on the other side and this way it'll help me get it in the right spot. All right, now my patch panel for my cab corner here, it's really big. I don't necessarily need all of this. If I only need two inches, I'll just cut off the bottom two inches and that's it. If I've got some damage up in the top, then I'll use the full thing. But you don't have to use this full thing. Only use what you need. The smaller amount that you use, the less heat you'll build up and the less body work you'll need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grind this off. I'm going to double check for any damage that might be further up. I'll determine how far up I'm going to cut this. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut my rocker panel out. Now when I'm cutting my rocker panel out, um, sometimes what people will do, they'll go ahead and they'll hit all of their spots where the spot welds are and then they'll try to rip it all off at once. Only problem with that is that when you do that, a lot of times you'll do damage to the inside rocker panel and this lip right here and different things. So what we're going to do is we're going to gently cut this mass out and then we're going to go ahead and pull it off. Then we can go ahead and uh, gently take off the rest of the metal. So where I'm going to be cutting this is uh, pretty close to my spot welds, but not right up on them. So it'll be about like that right here. I'll cut about right here. And then I'll go down. And then right here, I'll just cut just a little bit past the lip. And uh, this way I'll be able to just take this off gently. And when you're cutting it off, you don't want to take your cutting wheel and bury it all the way into the metal because you can cut the supports and the metal underneath. So you're only going to take your cutting wheel and you're only going to put it in the depth of the metal and that's it. So I'm going to cut this out for you. I'm going to grind that down and see what's up and I'll be back in a minute to show you what comes next. Right, so normally um, I'll start grinding off at the bottom down here and I'll work my way up and see how much damage I have. But uh, looking on the inside, I could see that I had a little problem right here. It's not that big of a deal. It's just a little dent and such. But I can kill two birds with one stone if I go ahead and use the patch panel up to about this section right here. Again, you don't necessarily need to. You only want to use what you need to use. But I'm going to kill two birds, three birds, one stone by using a little bit bigger patch panel.
All right, so I like to tell you everything that I do right, but it would be a disservice of you to tell you the things I did not do right. And one of the things I didn't do right is that when I cut this out, I went about a quarter of an inch in too far and I cut my inside rocker at the same time. So you have to be sure that you're cutting this about a half an inch uh, uh, out from this here so that you clear this inside rocker assuming you don't need to replace it it's not going to be a big deal a little bit of welding it'll be fixed but i want to save you the time now i'll take these little trim pieces off i'll use combinations of just grabbing these cutting pieces off a uh, spot weld cutter drill and things like that to take these off sometimes they'll be so rusted that when you're taking them off they'll just kind of fall off at the same time and it'll uh not take you that long but we will find out the rocker's cut off. I've got all the excess trim metal off of there too. I grinded off anything that was still left, straightened it up a little bit, and I've cut off my cab corner. Now I want to tell you a little bit about cutting your cab corner off. You got to make sure you don't go up too high. And when the old cab corner's on there, you just take this and put it up there and just draw a little bit of a line. Make sure that you're staying below that. I put some tape on here to keep my lines nice and straight. And um, when I get this off, now I can get my cab corner to sit on here a little bit more um, eloquently. When the bottom's on there, all that excess metal, you can only get it partially up. And what you're going to need to do is get it up here and firm it up. And then you'll trim off a little bit more metal and a little bit more metal. And you'll just keep working this guy until it's fitting just right. And uh, I'll show you that process now. So I'm double checking my measurements on my rocker panel right here. That'll help me get this lined up right. And then it'll help me line up my cab corner. I'm gonna, I got this set as well as I can with the excess metal that's still on. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll just get a tack weld on the back right here, and then I'll slowly cut this out, and I'll have a lot closer line. Now I'm still gonna have to trim it some, but that's what we're gonna do is just trim, get a little closer, trim, get a little closer.
All right, so now I've got this cut. Now I'm just gonna take this little piece of metal off right here, clean it up some. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean up all the metal that's underneath. And then I'm gonna put some um, rust mort on there, rust converter, uh, just anything that'll kill the rust. They have several products out now. And then I'll shoot a uh, just a can of black paint over there. And then I'll show you what comes next. So you can see we got it all cleaned up. We've got it all painted. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together for hopefully the final last time. You can see that it does take quite a bit of trimming and cutting, taking on, taking off, but the time you spend here is time you don't spend on body work. So spend it here instead. Now you can drill the holes for welding and you can drill them out on the bottom here, but then it's difficult to grind them and such. So I like to do that on the inside. I'll drill holes to either side of these like rain gutters right here. There's one in the front and back. And then I'll evenly space out the rest. Uh, everywhere else I'll go ahead and drill once my metal's on except for these couple right here because these are a little bit difficult sometimes to get on when um, this is up there and the inner fender's still on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this back on. I'll double check all my measurements and I'll be back to show you how I finish this off. Got my rocker on. I've got it tack welded. Where I tack weld it, I make sure that I'm able to cut it back off easily in case I need to shift things around. On my cab corner right here, what you really have to pay attention to is to make sure that you get this line right here nice and straight, and then the lines in the back nice and straight. The curve right here on the corner, um, you'll get different variations on this but these have to be set and here you'll be able to manipulate this in and get it to mold in but if you weld this first you're gonna have a real tough time getting these uh, now these clamps right here this is what they look like this is a patch panel clamp so you just simply insert this through and then you slip that through and you tighten it up and it'll give you a little bit of a gap right here. And that gap right there is actually necessary. If you were to do a, a weld and the metal was flush against each other, and then you welded and it didn't all the way go through, when you grind off that weld, it could break. So you have to have just a little bit of space in there for the weld to still be there when you grind off. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and bolt my door and fender back on. I'm gonna double check all my lines. If they're good, I'm gonna go ahead and start welding things up. So stay tuned, come on back and see how it looks. Now you can't just assume that just because all this clamps up good that it's gonna line up. You have to bolt on your door and fender to find out for sure. When I did, my cab corner here was tucked in just a little bit too much. Not a big deal, we only had little tack welds on there so I could just pop a tack weld and I drilled a couple of holes right in here. I just took this big fat screwdriver and I just pulled it out just a little bit so that my line was nice and then my line was right here nice, and I went ahead and tacked it. Now I'm all happy with this. A few things though that you should check. We got easy with this job and I didn't have to do any additional rust repair underneath. But if you did, there's gonna be different things you're gonna have to look out for. First of all, on your inner rocker panel, which is quite common to go bad, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've got a nice, about a 3 8 of an inch gap going all the way down so that you make sure that your door rubber is gonna fit in there properly. If you did rush repair on your doors, you gotta make sure that they're gonna fit right up in here. That's a real common problem. So I'll actually put this all back together. I'll actually even put the rubber in and make sure that when it closes, nothing's fighting me. So now I'm secure where everything's at and I'm gonna go ahead and do my final welding. When I'm doing that, I wanna to try to mimic the original spot welds. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna be drilling through and I'm gonna go even spacing. And when I'm drilling, I wanna make it through the top piece of my metal, but I don't wanna pop through my second piece. Now it's okay if you do, it's not a real big deal, but it's a little bit easier if you go through the first and a little bit through the second and then when you do your weld it'll really make it look nice so i'm going to go ahead and finish this all up while you watch along and get as many helpful handy hints as you can
So when I'm welding these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up my heat just a little bit, my argon just a little bit, because the uh, paint and stuff will interfere with your weld. And then I'm going to start at the bottom of my little drill bit. I'll get my little bead going there, and then I'll just round it out like that, and it should give you a nice finish like this. I'll grind those down a little bit, but as you can see, that's a nice, neat way of doing it. Uh, now, we want to make sure that all of the large open areas are welded before we work on our corners right here. These will typically be just a little bit off, and if you start to hammer on them before you solidify all the rest of the areas, it's just going to flop around on you. So get it nice and solid, then you can use a hammer and dolly to straighten these out and get the final weld on those. Also, we've got a brace that's going to run behind the cab right here and we're going to want to drill some holes out and do some spot weld welds on those also make sure you don't shoot above or below too much Now when you're welding, you want to remember that heat is a um, bad thing. And if you just get this and just weld it all the way across, it's going to warp everything up and cause you a lot of trouble. So you're only going to get your tack welds to solidify everything. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to do only about a half an inch or so at a time. And then really you don't want to do a nice weld like this and then have to grind it all off. You typically want to get a half an inch here, a half an inch here, a half an inch here. Then you'll go ahead and grind those down. Then you'll do another half an inch and then do some more grinding. This way you'll uh, keep your heat down as nice as possible and you'll keep your work down as much as possible. Also, if you do start welding something and it's a little bit off, don't keep welding. Stop, take your hammer and dolly, get everything lined back up again and then continue welding. Now that I've got all this here pretty much set, I can finish off with this. Like I said before, these lines have to be perfect. This line here will typically be off. When I'm doing this, I'm just going to go ahead and get my lines that line up the nicest and the easiest. And then here on the edge, that one will typically be uh, out or in. And uh, that's just because of over the years and the different manufacturing of the different manufacturing places, you'll get different idiosyncrasies on that. So you might have to tuck it in or tuck it out. You could use a um, uh, heat and torch it and shrink it, or you could heat a, use a heat shrinking wheel, or uh, sometimes just in your welding, the heat will make it shrink and match up. But take your time. This is going to be the most important part right in here. All right, so now I am underneath the truck. Of course, I've got this on flat ground, and I've got jack stands up underneath my frame rails. And I've just drilled these holes out here. Again, it's easier to do it from the back side than it is to do it from the front side as far as grinding and welding. you got to make sure that you go far enough up to um, not be on the edge, but we still got to make sure that we are welding onto this lip right here that's about a half an inch. So all I got to do is weld these up, clamp on either side, and then uh, I'll grind them down and we'll be all ready pretty much. All right, so you can see this is relatively difficult, but you can do it. On a scale of one to 10, I'd say maybe this is about an eight. You do need to know how to weld. You're gonna need a few specialty tools, but it's not that big of a deal. If you take your time, you're gonna be able to take care of this on your truck yourself. Now, this took me about uh, six, seven hours. Maybe it'll take you seven, eight, nine, ten, but that's okay. You just want to make sure you spend your time now because we don't want to cut this all off and do it again, and we don't want to spend a bunch of time doing metal work and body work on top of it. So take your time, get it right the first time. Now, if you've got any helpful handy hints that you'd like to uh, suggest on doing this job even easier for our other viewers, you make sure you let me know. And if you'd like to see some other videos that I haven't already covered, you let me know about that too because we are here to help you out. We'll see you next week with even more help.